I don't know about you guys, but I'm getting pretty sick. I'm getting my butt kicked by this door. So let's see if we can get it done. I've done a lot of things with this door. I've been back and forth a couple times. I took the black trim off and replaced it. I took the weather stripping that uh, seals the door off and replaced it. I put this um, carpet skid stuff, I showed you that. I put that on a strip down here. The first adhesive wouldn't work. I tried spray adhesive, that wouldn't work. What I ended up using is this stuff. This is a GE silicone. Silicone 2 Plus specifically. It's bathroom silicone but it uh, sticks to glass very well. I stick this pretty good. Just uh, put it on there and folded it over and let it, you put some weight on it so that it would stay. But it worked really well to hold the stuff to it. And you can see here on the glass, this white, that's what that is. Now, I just said it held pretty well, but obviously it's not still on there. But what was happening is with this stuff folded over, I could not get the glass in between the weather stripping on the top of the door it was tearing this stuff off. So I ended up peeling this stuff off, leaving this stuff on the glass, which helps because it does provide some friction there. I did get it to stick, and I was able to fish my hand in there and get this stuff kind of temporarily into the channel and all that kind of stuff, and it, and it, and it worked out. I've got a paper template here just to make for the new um, cover, the vinyl cover, using the stuff that I got from Newton commercial so I'm gonna go ahead and trace this piece out give myself a little bit of extra room obviously on either side there just so I have some some mistake room and then go ahead and cut it and see how it goes for putting it down got the piece of vinyl here that I'm gonna put on the uh, the top of the, the cap of the uh, door I've got some adhesive down here you set it up for like 15 minutes or so so I'm gonna give that a couple more minutes and then fold this piece over and that'll give me that's for uh, going to go here in this divot and just give me a nice clean edge there. Obviously, I don't have it cut on an angle and I have to do that, but I think what I'm going to do, I'll fold that over and then I think I may glue down just this portion of it down to about here and then fit this all in and then glue that portion. I got the piece ready to go, ready for the adhesive. I fold it over the corners there, as you can see, with the contact cement, so that's looking good. I got this kind of somewhat taped off just to prevent incidental overspray. I'm not really worried about this stuff because you can take uh, paint thinner and it'll, it'll wipe right off, but you know, why get it on the paint if I don't have to? So I'm going to go ahead, clean this off real quick with some wax and grease remover just to make sure that the surface is clean. Spray adhesive on both sides. Again, I'm, I'm worried about getting under here and I'm just going to kind of go heavy on the top here. One of the tricks here is that when this folds over and comes underneath like I explained, the clips here need to get onto metal, not onto this stuff, because it'll tear it up and it'll move it and it just won't work. So in the in the old piece, if you remember the cutouts were in it, well I gotta make my own cutouts, but the problem is is that it's hard to measure and do all that kind of stuff and line this up. So I can put these clips anywhere I want. So I essentially try to try to evenly space them along this waist seal and then just cut little grooves to make it so that I could hopefully fold it over but not get so much that, I, that I'll miss some of this. But I'm not going to cut the blocks out, I think, until I um, get it all the way in there. And I don't know if that's the right answer, but that's what I'm going to try to do. I'll see if I can maybe get a magnet under there and bend it over and see, see how far. That's probably the better choice here is to get uh, get this bent over, use one of these magnets to stick it on the inside, and then I can see how much, if any, I've got room to wiggle, because I need to have some glue here so that it sticks, otherwise the thing's just gonna peel up and it's gonna look like crap. Oh, that's much better. Yeah, so sorry about that. You can see. The raptor liner that's on it. I did raptor liner before I cleaned it. All right, so I got the notches cut out as good as I could get it. I'm going to get this thing lined up, and uh, I'll use the magnets throughout to try to help everything hold and all that kind of stuff. So go ahead and lay this glue down. Same spray adhesive stuff that I've been using. 
and uh, be a little smarter about it here. Try to protect the moving blanket. All right, so the way this stuff works, again, spray it on, pretty straightforward. 30 seconds, I'm gonna go to booth services. All right, well, I cut one just a bit shorter than I wanted to, but everything else looks okay. I'm having adhesion problems over here and way over here, but nothing, thankfully, at least not yet on the on the curve. So I just gotta keep an eye on it. Um, so I put some contact cement here and on the other end, and I'm just kind of going around and rubbing, rubbing my hands over everything just to kind of keep it, keep it uh, stuck. So, I think, uh, I think I'll be all right. And it looks a hell of a lot better, I'll tell you that. So, we'll come back after this uh, contact cement kind of dries up a little bit before it gets tacky here, and then revisit. All right, not too shabby. Happy with the way that that looks. Not, uh, I got a good rotation except for this guy right here. And uh, there's just not adhesive there. But, uh, but I'm going to be using this so it's going to be covered i'm not worried about the window uh running into this stuff because of the the uh the strip here the, the felt strip will we'll hopefully keep it far enough away but uh but we'll see so i'm going to go ahead get this felt strip in i lined up all my gaps again everything looks good go ahead and get the felt strip in and then try to get the uh the rain channel or whatever the heck that thing's more properly called and then uh, see if i can't get the glass in all right, so this is obviously the window crank stuff. The window sits down in this channel here. You got the crank here that sits in here and it's aligned like this. And then you just have this little grip piece right here. And that, uh, that'll rotate and allow you to sit there. And that just holds there. I've showed you this before. The problem that I had was this spring here, I didn't have in properly. I mean, Get this arranged here, zoom in a little bit further so I can show you. So this spring here, obviously it's here for a reason. It's under tension, and what it does is it helps roll the door down, or the window down and up when it's in there. Well, I hadn't set any tension on this thing at all and just kind of threw it in there. So when I was playing around, it slowly dawned on me that maybe this thing should be under tension and this spring should actually work like a clock spring and kind of wind and unwind it as you go up and down. Now, I still haven't figured it out yet and the right way to do it, but it is under tension. So then what you do is you essentially, there's gears back here. You can see the gearing and it fits inside. If I can show you this without screwing it up on the camera, back in here is where that gearing comes through and connects with the window crank, which is this guy here, and it'll wind up and wind down. And you can totally crank this all the way down to where it eventually kind of pops out. So what I'm gonna do now, Essentially, the door is going to be set up like this, and I'm going to wind the window crank and see if I can kind of figure out which way it should go. So what I would expect is as you wind the window down, you would put tension on the spring. And as you wind the window up, you would release the tension on the spring, but it would help you wind the window up. Now, now the normal position of the window is going to be up, so I don't know if it really matters that you wouldn't want spring tension on there for very long. But that's the way that this is set up right now. I think the problem is, is because there's so many attachment points and so much linkage here, I can't really verify that I've got it in there properly because it's, uh, you know, this portion here and this portion here would be static to the door. And I can't really simulate that without building some rig and I'm just, I'm not going to do that. So 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put it in the door like this with the spring set up the way that it is and see if it uh, makes sense on the way that it should work after I get it bolted in. I did grease everything up, just regular, um, just regular bearing grease there. So it's uh, now it makes a mess and gets all over the place. And it doesn't seem like you can get this linkage in there, but you can. All right, so there's all sorts of stuff going on in here. Like I kind of showed you before, you can see this silver part. There's also a silver part here. That's that's what those this is what this runs in on the outside to lift the window on and out. So you got to worry about that and get that aligned properly. And then all the places where it bolts up, obviously. Kind of hard to get a good camera angle in here with this looking down on it. So I got the window in there. Just got the uh, the bolts tightened up real, real tight. And it's winding the spring as the window goes down. And as I run the window up, it unwinds the spring. So I can tell actually already that that seems to run smoother. Winding and unwinding it. So I would, I'm assuming that it's going to help the weight as you run the window up and down. So that's cool. That seems to work. So now I'm going to uh, see if I can get lucky here and get the window in. And, uh, and yeah, we'll see what happens. All right, so like I showed you, I used the rubber stuff, carpet uh, anti-skid stuff or whatever it's properly called, and attached it with the silicone. So now I'm going to get, just go ahead and feed this guy in here and then run it down the channel and see what happens. but I just can't get in between the channel with that extra thickness. So, you know, and the other option is to get the glass in here, load it up with silicone maybe, I don't know. Cut it down a little bit. So what I've done here is I've got a strip here, I've got a strip behind here that you can't see, and I got this guy over in here, and you can see that tape and the tape's just holding the top layer on and kind of folding it over and the, the rest of it's just hanging straight down so no matter um, how it kind of lays out here I'm going to be able to push the rubber into the channel and have it you know make a make a C or whatever you want to call it out of there so I'm gonna go ahead now I had two of them the end ones on there pretty tight and it seemed to work but I wanted to get that center one in there just to give me a little bit more uh, grip but I think this is gonna gonna work out for me we'll see still need the mallet of course can't find it again all right so that seems to be pretty well seated in there and I think that's probably gonna do it Well, I'm, I'm not going to worry too much about it, but what I am going to do is I'm going to go ahead and lubricate stuff, the channels, and, uh, and as much as I can and all that, and uh, get, this, get this working a little bit better than it is. All right, well, I don't know if I've come through this completely or not, but, uh, but it's functional. I have, like I, like I showed you, I have new handles and everything, but uh, it needs, uh, needs a little bit better of a securing down there but I'm not quite sure what else I can do pretty happy the way this came out there's uh, definitely some mistakes in it but I think overall it looks better than that other piece did and uh, especially with the, the vinyl from Newton so there is uh, there is some spots where it kind of sticks out and I'm not so sure that I'm gonna be able to do anything about that so so now I've got the window down just where the weather strip that slides all the way over top is not just barely touching it so now what I'm going to do is, if you remember, I replaced the felt pads on these things. Now I'm going to loosen these up and slide that pad up to where it hits the bottom of the, uh, the window piece. It actually doesn't look like it's going to hit it. See 
if I can see it, how it's landed in there. Yeah, it looks like it's just barely touching it. All right, so I'm not convinced that that spring is right, but I've done this enough times now that I should be able to pull this thing on and off real quick and get it to, get it to get it to uh, to go back in there. All right, so there's the driver's door, and again, with the exception of the door card and possibly the spring, it's all done. So I'm going to go ahead and put this back, put it uh, put it back to the side, and uh, weighs significantly more now, so you got to be careful with the paint. And I'll move on to something else. All right, everybody, that's all I got. Thanks so much for watching. Leave a comment below. Tell me what you think. Well, I didn't put the door on the car because I don't want to scratch any paint yet. But that was uh, much more effort and much more involvement and pain than I thought it would be just getting stuff internal to the door done. But it's done. A little bit of an outstanding question on that spring, but I'll answer that here soon enough. So thanks so much for watching. Have a good rest of your day. Cheers.